Hey friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. If you're new, my name is Becky and some really exciting stuff has happened out there. Yesterday, they started, well, let me just show you. I'm gonna bring you back to yesterday and show you what happened in the garden. And because that is happening, we now can do something that I have been wanting to do for over a year. But before we can get to the project that I've been wanting to do for over a year, we get to fill the raised beds. This project has officially been going on for three and a half months and we are behind because of inclement weather, but I guess that's part of the journey when you are working outside in the winter. Now it's spring, but we are we have hit a huge milestone here. We are filling the beds with soil on this day. But before they fill the beds with soil, we are going to put a layer of hardware cloth down. This is a galvanized hardware cloth. And the goal of this is to prevent any moles or voles from coming up underneath and either eating the bugs that are in my raised beds or eating the roots, depending on what kind of rodent that we're trying to prevent. I did not do this at the last homestead and I struggled with moles in my raised beds. And so that's why we decided to go ahead and take this extra step and put in the hardware cloth. So each one of the raised beds is gonna have a layer of this down. And then on top of that, we are going to put a layer of landscape fabric. This is not that super heavy duty fabric. This is a lighter weight fabric. And the reason for this is to help keep the cedar um, as healthy as possible for as long as possible. So that's why we're doing this. So we're gonna line each bed with some hardware cloth and then with some landscape fabric. Once that is in, then the fun part, we get to add the soil. Now, funny enough, this is the same soil that I put in the last garden at the last homestead. It's from the same company. We did, if you were with us, we ran our own soil test where we sprouted some bean seeds. To, we just tested the compost. This is not just compost. That would be way too expensive to fill these beds with 100% compost and it's not necessary. So this is a mixture of topsoil and compost and sand. So it's 50% topsoil, 40% compost, and 10% sand. And they are using this, I think this is a skid steer with a bucket attachment on the front. I'm not exactly sure, but they are using that to fill up these raised beds. You might have noticed that there is a cup that is upside down in that raised bed. And what that cup is, is it is where the irrigation is coming through. And obviously we don't want to get any soil in the water line. So that is a way to protect the water line. So we're just going to start filling up these raised beds. This is a huge step that we are at this point. Now, when I'm talking to you today, this happened a few weeks ago and I could have started putting stuff in the ground, but it's been rainy, life has happened, and I still don't have anything in the ground yet, but I'm really excited to get out there. Probably this weekend, it's supposed to be sunny and beautiful, and hopefully we can get out there and we can start putting seeds in the ground. The biggest thing you can probably see in the background, there are chickens there. And before we start putting anything in these raised beds, Josh and I have to come up with a chicken run area. And we it's going to be a long time probably before we have a permanent situation for the chickens. I know a lot of people really like to have mobile chickens or free range chickens. Um, for us, that personally just doesn't work very well because... Well, the free range chickens have worked okay for now, but the problem is free range chickens are messy creatures. They love to spend time on my back patio and they love to spend time on my front deck and chickens make messes. And so Josh and I, I think this weekend are gonna come up, we've, we're gonna reuse a bunch of stuff that we that is already on the homestead. We're gonna reuse a bunch of the T-posts that were taken out when this project first started. There used to be a fence around the backyard with T-posts and some wire. I think we're gonna go ahead and reuse that and make a temporary, not so temporary, it'll probably be a year or two before we make like a permanent home for them, but they need to be locked up for a couple reasons. I can't plant anything in the ground garden wise if my chickens are free ranging because they will eat, they will devour whatever I put in the ground. 
And I'm also tired of having messes on my front deck and my back deck. A lot of people also like to have mobile chicken coops where they can move their chickens from place to place. We tried that at the last homestead and it just didn't work for us. It's not, it doesn't fit our lifestyle well. So I am going to build a permanent run at some point for them where they will be. We'll have a temporary kind of fence set up until we're able to build like a permanent structure for them. But that's what's worked best for us. And so if you get into chickens and you see that people do it all different ways, just figure out what works best for you and go with that. I felt really bad when we uh, decided to do that, to have like a permanent run at the last homestead. I don't know if you watched Josh and I built out this really big, beautiful run for them. And I felt bad about it at first, but it just worked for our lifestyle so well that that's what we're going to do here. And you just got to do what works best for you. And so that's what I'm excited about. Now we're just continuing to fill these beds. These beds, it took uh, probably a week or so to get all these beds filled. Josh and I at the last homestead, we, it was me, Josh, my dad, and one of our friends came and it took us an entire week to also fill those raised beds. This is it's a big project and we rented a, this, um, it's a skid steer like this, but it had a different bucket attachment on it. And it was kind of fun to drive that thing around and fill the raised beds. So it's definitely, if you're going to do a project like this, renting a piece of equipment is almost necessary. And that's what we ended up having to do. So this was about a week to get all this done. And once they got this in, then what I was able to do is we get out there and we do the project that I've wanted to do for over a year. I didn't do it at the last homestead because even though I had what I needed to do it, I knew that we weren't gonna be there long-term and so it wasn't something that I wanted to invest my time in. But now that we are at our forever homestead, it is an exciting thing that I'm excited about that I wanna invest the time, the effort into doing this experiment. Like I said, we ran a soil test where we started some bean seeds and I went with a company that the bean seeds looked or the sprouts looked the healthiest. And then we are gonna be running another soil test. So that is the project that we are gonna be doing here in just a couple minutes. It took them all day yesterday to line the beds and fill eight beds. So it's probably gonna take them the rest of the day to finish filling the beds and then we can start planting out. But what I wanna do before I plant anything is I'm gonna get some more appropriate shoes on other than my slippers, which is what I've been wearing out there. Friends, it looks so good and it smells so good out here. The smell of compost and soil is incredible. They are actively filling the beds right now. Oh, it's windy. What we're gonna do today is we are gonna test this soil. Now, if you were here, I tested the compost that went into this bed, but this bed is a mixture of compost, topsoil, and sand, and so, when I went to the companies before I decided which company I was gonna go with for the compost, they also do a topsoil sand, this is a raised bed mix. And so I have the soil test results that the company did for their compost, but I don't have the soil test results for what is actually in my beds. And if you were here when we were looking through the papers, I'm gonna show you what they look like. You almost need a PhD to decipher what those soil test kits, or what the soil test results, how to decipher them and how to read them and interpret them. And I got this soil test kit a year ago. I actually met the owners of the people that developed this kit. And what they have come up with is incredible. Now the reason I didn't do this last year on my last garden is because I, I met them, I got this in March. I found out I was pregnant. We. We're in the process of buying this homestead and the idea of testing my soil fell way down to the back burner because I knew that I wasn't going to be there long term so I didn't need to invest my resources into testing that soil because I wasn't going to be 
putting a bunch more amendments in it. But this soil, I wanna know where I'm starting. The cool thing about this test kit is it's so easy to decipher and it's so easy to use. So what you do is you open your soil test kit and then the very first thing you want to do, you say, you see it says important on there, you want to register your kit. So you're going to go on their website, you're going to create an account, and you're going to register your kit. I didn't do this right away, and I almost lost this piece of paper, and that would have been devastating because I wouldn't have been able to register it. So open your kit before you go outside, register your kit, and it comes with a prepaid mailing package slip on it and then what we're going to do it walks you step by step there's little pictures and diagrams it is right here it is so easy you register you collect your soil you put it in the mail and then about six to five days later you get the test results and then they also recommend amendments of what you need to do so there's two little things that come in it along with the prepaid mailing slip and one of them is a little scoop and we'll get to it in just a second. But what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to collect soil from six different areas and you wanna go about six inches deep. Now this probably wasn't totally necessary in my situation because I purchased the soil and it's all basically the same, but I went through the effort and I went around and I grabbed soil from a bunch of different areas trying to get a good random sample as much as possible. Now, one of these soil kits is good for up to a half acre. So if you want to test your lawn or if you're an in-ground gardener, you can test up to a half acre as long as the soil type is about the same. Now, I wouldn't want to test my raised beds and then go to my lawn and test my lawn because that's going to, they're two separate different things that I should be testing. So on their website, when you create your account, you can mark what area of your yard or property or lawn that the area, oh, this is me. I lost my package where I lost both the envelope, which would have been sad. And then I also at one point lose the area, the thing that I needed to register. So this is me running around <laughs> trying to find all the pieces because it was so windy on this day. So I grab a piece of rocks and I s secure my soil test kit pieces so that I don't lose them. So back to the, when you register, you mark raised beds. That's what I did for mine because the soil kit here, I'm doing raised beds. I eventually want to, because I'm going to do an in-ground garden at some point, I will have a different area and I'll register that and it will say, you know, in-ground garden. And then Josh really likes to keep a nice green lawn too. And so we'll probably end up doing our lawn as well because, you know, different areas might need different amendments. So once you collect your random samples, you're going to mix those samples together and you want to get a nice random mixture. So you can see here, I'm kind of breaking up any lumps or clumps because the topsoil can be kind of glumpy in there. I want to make sure that I've got the compost all mixed up in there. And then I'm going to take my scoop. So there is a scoop. And then there's also a little container that has some water in it. You do not want to pour that water out. And then it has this absorby thing. I don't know the proper term for that, but that's what they end up testing. So you're going to take a scoop of your mixture. You want to make sure there's no rocks or sticks in it. And then you're going to pour that into the water and you're going to close that up. So you don't want to pour out any of the water. You want to make sure that little ball is still in there. You're going to screw on the lid tightly. I shook it up a little bit. I don't think it's necessary. I made sure that um, I registered it when I got back inside. I'm going to stick it in this prepaid package and then within 24 hours you want to get this in the mail and then it takes about five to six weeks we're going to go over the soil test results this is me <laughs> running after the registration paper i thought i lost it but i end up finding it so we're going to go over the test results in just a little bit Whew, it is windy out there note to self register your soil test kit before you bring out that registration outside because it blew away and I almost lost it, which would have been pretty sad. So I, I brought you back in here because I wanna show you the soil test results we got from the two soil companies that I tested the soil with the green beans. 
and I want to show you how complicated they are to decipher. First though, I need to take my coat off because it is very warm in this grow room. Whew, with all the lights that I have going on now, it is so warm. But I kept the soil test results here and you can look them up online. Both companies had them online as a way to view them. Now both the companies that I went to go purchase soil at gave you the test results from their third party independent testing. But like I mentioned out there, you almost need a PhD to decipher them. They don't give you whether the numbers are high or low, they just give you what the numbers are and then you have to go and research every single one. The nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, pH, organic matter, moisture, particle size, all those things. So they list them all, you get a lot of information, but there's no chart on whether it's high or low. So what I had to do is Google every single one. And the problem is, I don't know with all, like if you go to your local extension office, if this is what they look like, because I've never done that before. But from what I understand, they're about the same, is they're just a list of information. And then you, as the gardener, have to then figure out, where am I supposed to go from here? And that's what I felt like when it came to this. I had to Google, and the problem is, this gave a percent versus the, when I was looking online, so it says nitrogen, is 0.55% wet weight basis. And when I was looking online, that's not the unit of measurement I found online. So I spent probably four or five hours researching what this all meant. And to be honest, I still don't fully understand it. So I'm excited about this because I haven't got the test results back. I will show you when I get them, but I'm gonna get one sheet that is going to list the nutrients it's gonna tell me if it's high or low, and then it is going to recommend what amendments I need. And the cool thing is once you have an account, this is not sponsored again, this is me wanting to use this product. And I met the owners who invented this thing and I, I'm really excited for them because I think they have something really cool here and I want to promote them because it's two guys, two college friends, and I think that what they've done here is groundbreaking no pun intended. I did not mean <laughs> to make a pun there. My husband would be proud. He is the master of all puns. And it's going to give me the list of amendments. And every year I do this, because I'm going to do this every year, you are going to be able to see through chronologically how your soil does. So I'm really excited about this. And I'm glad that I did some research and I was learning about nutrients and things with this, but I don't think this type of test that you get from your local extension office is very user friendly. And I think what these two guys have come up with is user friendly. And for me, that's what I need. I'm a busy, busy person. I'm a busy mom now. I'm, a, I'm just busy. And the last thing I need is to spend four or five hours researching nutrients. All right, friends, now we're gonna go inside. First, I'm gonna give you a span of how beautiful it looks in here. Look at how lush and green. I have never, ever, ever had plant starts look this beautiful. I mean, look at the nasturtiums. How beautiful is that? Those are going to be so stunning out there. Our tomatoes, our figs in those pots are looking really good. And I'm just really excited. I did the math on how much this would have cost me to purchase this amount of ginger shots at the store. Can I just say how amazing it feels to be out in the garden with you again and just sitting here and talking and I'm really excited to talk about these soil test results. So last March I went and took a trip to Utah and I met the founders of this company, the soil test company. They are two friends and they were really frustrated when you would go to send off your soil to say your local extension office or wherever it might be. You would get these results back and I can tell you when I went and was getting the soil tests for the companies that produce soil in my area and I was trying to read them, I spent hours looking at the results. They gave you the results on, you know, potassium, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfate, and all that stuff, but, but there was nowhere on there that said what was good, what was low, what was high. So I had to go through each individual nutrient, Google that, figure out was that good, was that bad, was it high, was it low? But also it didn't give me any recommendations on what I needed to do. It didn't tell me, hey, this would be a good fertilizer, you need more compost, blah, blah, blah. And so I, when I 
found this soil or the compost and I got the test results on that then I did figure out which one I wanted to go with and I purchased that but what is in my beds is not just compost I had those soil results from the company but that was just for the compost so what is in my bed is it's 50% topsoil 40% compost and 10% sand it would be way too expensive to fill these beds with just compost and it's kind of not necessary so I wanted to then go ahead and test what was in these beds and last March I had the opportunity to to meet these two guys who founded this company and what they're doing is pretty incredible for the home gardener they are making it super user friendly their idea was to kind of base it off if you've ever done one of the DNA testings where you take your sample you send it in the mail it's already got the postage on it and then they give you your results back and you make an account so I sent my soil samples off and about six days later I got an email saying that my soil samples were back and I can tell you looking at my soil results that all I have to do is quick glance and I know what is high and what is low I don't need to do any googling everything I need to know is on this one sheet I can tell that my potassium and my phosphorus are high and my copper and sulfur are low and then the majority of my nutrients in my soil are in the optimal range but not only does it tell me what's high and what's low you can opt for shopping for organic fertilizers that it recommends for your soil or synthetic fertilizers for your soil now I went ahead and I purchased the amount they recommended per square 100 feet and I purchased that and it's what I need for my beds now if you do a soil sample what I need for my beds is probably going to be different than what you need for your garden so I don't need to show you what I, I can show you when I go to use it but it's specific for this situation and it's pretty cool because they offer you an organic option or a synthetic option I went with the organic but you can go with whatever you're comfortable with in your garden it also has an area where you can look at recommendations for amending the pH of your soil if you need to do that and for the micronutrients and Redmond partnered with them with this soil sample with this company the soil testing and you can get their micronutrients on Redmond's website and you can use my discount code for those micronutrients and for the soil test if it's something you're interested in but like I said inside I feel like the blinders have been taken off my eyes and when I go to amend my soil I know why I am amending it and what I'm amending it with and I know that it's going to help benefit my plants and hopefully benefit my soil and every single year I want to test my soil at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year so that I can track throughout the years how it's looking I plan to add compost to these I plan to add manure I plan to add amendments over the years so this is just a starting point I am really excited to see how my nutrients gauge throughout the years goes because you just type in because you create an account I'm gonna easily be able to pull it up and I'm gonna be able to look at one year after the other and I'm just really excited about this I think that this is going to be a big benefit when it comes to gardening and I'm really excited about it <laughs> just want to say thank you for being here thank you for being you I just really hope that this is encouraging to you I'm still a really new gardener this is only I'm going in my fourth garden season and I feel like a completely brand new gardener I'm in a new zone here I'm in a different climate because I'm at a much higher elevation than we were at the last homestead so I feel like I'm a brand new gardener with you we're in it together I already have some serious <laughs> failures in the grow room some serious successes in the grow room I think I finally figured out some really key things which I'm really excited about but my broccoli that I started because I thought that they would those broccolis would be in the ground but we didn't have any soil in the bed so I couldn't put the the broccoli in the beds when I thought I was going to they've already bolted <laughs> so I have bolted broccoli in the grow room and that was um, the plants if I was able to put them in the ground when I plan to they probably would have done fine but they were in, in that grow room for too long so they have gone to seed and that's okay I do have a local place where I can buy starts for a very affordable price. I try not to buy starts at big box stores because they charge about almost, I think last year they were $3.89 and 
$4.89 per start, which that can add up very, very quickly when you have a garden this size. So I would encourage you, if you are looking at starts, look at smaller local greenhouses in your area, because usually you can get starts for a much more affordable price than that. Usually it's about a dollar or two per start as opposed to $5 a start. So I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you want the recipes or if you're interested in looking out for the soil test yourself, I'll link it down below. And I hope this is encouraging to you. I just want to say cheers. I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.